Hi, I'm Brandon Heller, and I'm going to show you how OpenFlow can be used to reduce energy in data center networks. Networks and data centers may not use as much energy as the servers, but they still consume a massive amount of energy. According to the EPA, in 2006, data center networks in the U.S. were responsible for 6 billion kilowatt hours. That's a lot of money and a lot of carbon emissions, and it grows as new data centers are built. To understand where the energy is going, let's try a simple experiment. We'll use a 48-port Ethernet switch and a power meter. We first plug in the switch, and the power meter reads 150 watts. Next, we plug in all the ports, and the meter reads 185 watts. Now we send packets through those links and plot the results. The x-axis is load, and the y-axis is measured power in watts. The red line shows power as a function of load. Going from idle to full throttle on all links results in only a 5% increase. This pattern, which holds for all the switches we tried, doesn't seem right. It means the switch is inefficient at low loads. While we can't buy switches today that are efficient at low loads, we can use these switches to make a network that is. We've built a system to do this called Elastic Tree, and it can reduce the energy consumed by a data center network by up to 60% by simply turning off unneeded links and switches. The challenge is to save energy without affecting performance or fault tolerance in a way that scales to data centers with 100,000 nodes. Now you'll see it in action. The top half shows a data center network where each large dot is a switch with four ports and individual servers are the small dots. The bottom graph shows total network power in purple and the traffic demand is in blue. Usually the goal of a network is to balance traffic as evenly as possible over the entire set of links. The power is effectively constant regardless of load, which you're seeing now. We're trying to do the opposite with Elastic Tree. We'll turn it on, and now you notice a major difference. The network power follows the traffic as links are turned on and off. We can't save any energy when 100% of the network is on, but when load is low, like in the middle of the night, we can. The same pattern holds with a slightly smoother shape when we have a larger network. So far you've seen a simulation, but you never know if an idea really works until you run it on hardware. This is where OpenFlow fits in. It enables us to measure a traffic matrix as well as control the routing of flows. Both are required for a hardware prototype of Elastic Tree. The one shown here used 270 ports of gigabit Ethernet to support a data center of 54 servers. Since OpenFlow is vendor neutral, the code didn't need to change when I used switches from HP, NEC, or Pronto and ran a smaller 16-node setup. In this next clip, you're seeing hardware with live latency monitoring shown in teal. For each data point, a bank of traffic generators recreate a traffic matrix, while Elastic Tree pushes down a set of flow routes to open flow switches. Normally, the latency is around 50 microseconds, but whenever flows combine to exactly the link rate, like two 500 megabit flows, the latency jumps up to 500 microseconds. This happens because an initial implementation wasn't considering Ethernet interframe spacing causing every packet to pass through a switch buffer. The easy fix is to add a safety margin to turn on extra switches before each link nears full capacity and performance is affected. But we're still missing one thing. To make this idea real, it has to scale to the largest data centers. This graph compares the scalability of the three algorithms. We started with a formal model, moved to a greedy algorithm, and finally arrived at the topology-aware heuristic, which uses knowledge of the structure of typical data center networks. The red circle corresponds to a data center with 20,000 nodes solved in well under a minute. To recap, Elastic Tree is a way to make a data center network more efficient. OpenFlow made a prototype of Elastic Tree possible by providing control over flow routes and real switches. Our work suggests that adding a sleep mode to switches or simply getting them to boot faster could make this approach practical. If you'd like more info, check out the link shown.